So your regular programming is going to continue as normal from tomorrow where I'll be posting my passive income report for July. However, I thought I would post this up just in case anyone is interested. I'm basically part of a founding members club for a new app that's being developed at the moment called Topia. This is not sponsored, I just thought it would be interesting for some of you. I'm not expecting the views to be like massive and I'm going to pre-warn you the quality isn't great as my normal videos are obviously um, filmed on a proper camera. This is just a zoom recording but yeah. If you want to sign up for early access when it does go live there's a link in the description below. I don't get anything from it, it's not an ad, I just thought you might be interested. It's going to be the first app that's built and designed completely around the fire community that's why they've been talking to a bunch of us ahead of time to see what we want from an app like that and then we've just done these little videos for the rest of the community the aim is that it's going to provide the tool structure and resources for the fire community to help them achieve financial freedom anyway if you do watch the interview thank you but if not see you in tomorrow's video um so thanks thanks everyone for being here really excited for anna to um to give um, her chat on her journey and to also go through the Q and A's. Just one thing we're doing differently this time around for the Q and A's is if you've got a question at any point um, throughout um, Anna talking, just send through the question on the chat and it will come directly to me. And then once Anna's finished going over her journey, I'll basically um, go through the questions and I'll say, um, okay, Matt's got a question, Matt, do you wanna ask your question? So then you guys can come off mute, ask your question, and then after Anna's answered, if you have any follow-up questions, we'll go for kind of one follow-up question, um, maybe two if it's if it's a short one, and then we'll move on to the next um, to the next question. So that's slightly different from last time round. So like I said, just message me your questions, and at the end I'll say whoever's got a question, um, you know, Rory go, and then you can unmute and go. But yeah, without further ado, we've got Anna here, who's got a really excited journey, um, fast tracked her way to fire. She's approaching it. I think in seven years and also built a couple of pretty successful social channels which she's in the process of growing so i'll shut up and hand over to um to you anna perfect um hi guys um so i'll just sort of talk about initially what kind of motivated me and then how i've i've managed to do that in the, in the plan um so for the majority of my life i've been in debt i've always had like credit cards loans pretty much the second i got like a big girl job I ended up taking a loan and it's, it's just been fueling since I've never been sort of in like financial hardship um, if you will but I've always had loads of debt and I never really thought of it as a problem even though I never felt very free and it was it was a weird sort of feeling because despite making a pretty decent salary like I felt like I never had any money and then last summer um, I had bit of like a mental breakdown and I was signed off work for five weeks and I went to stay with my family in Poland uh, for the majority of that time and it was whilst I was there it was the first time in my working career that I'd had that long of a time off uh, just to like chill out relax and uh, my family live in this little village in Poland which is like really chilled you can walk everywhere like walk or cycle like you genuinely don't even need a car and they all live near each other and the pace of life is just so different. So I live in London um, and pretty much most of my life have lived in London and everything here, like again, I work in finance as well. So I've always been in so much stress and so much fast pace and, you know, yes, I've taken holidays, but it's never really been longer than two weeks at a time. So having that sort of five weeks to relax and see a different way of life, it just made me think, hold on, maybe I want to do this. And my parents last year decided to go back to Poland um, after, again, living in London the majority of, of my life. And I started thinking about it more and more. And then I thought like, well, you know, I'm just going to try and get out of debt, just maybe give myself some more options. And then the more I started looking into it, you know, on things like YouTube and blogs and things, I was, I, I got more into like the whole fire movement and because I'd never really thought of it previously. I just thought like, oh, maybe I could just move to Poland and, you know, do a finance job here or something. Then the more I thought about it in terms of what I was watching on YouTube and reading and thinking about my own numbers, I was like, maybe I could make this work. And that's when I sort of just decided I'm going to do it. Uh, I got all these extra little like side hustles. I got extra jobs. Um, I had like my main nine to five and then I was doing 
two like zero hours jobs where I was working in like a bar and a restaurant. Uh, so that was like, everyone was like, oh, how are you doing that? Like, <laughs> have you got the energy? And I think it was just because it was, I was so fueled and so determined to like pay off all this debt and just like save loads of money. That, that kind of kept me going. I was doing those jobs. I was like doing cat sitting and like I sold some stuff and just like literally crazy. I paid off like 25K of debt in like 11 months. Um, and obviously like not going out and stuff because I was constantly working also added up. Because, <laughs> you know, one night out in London and you spent like 50, 60 quid. Um, so yeah, and through that, I've sort of, you know, focused on things like, you know, getting a better job, all of that sort of added up together. I've almost paid off all my debts now. The only things that I've got remaining are a couple of 0% credit cards. So I'm, I, I'm not really worried about them because obviously I'm not incurring interest at the moment. So I'm just putting the, the rest of that money into like investments and savings. And I bought some land in Poland, uh, at the end of last year. So a piece of land came up in not too far from my parents and where they're currently based. So I snapped it up. Um, so I have a piece of land now and my plan is to build a house on that land, which compares to prices here um, is going to be very, very cheap. It's going to cost about £60,000 to build and finish a five bed detached house. On top of that, I've factored in everything else I want to do, like solar panels and things to reduce my costs later on. It should cost me about £100,000 in total. So considering I'm now saving 50% of my income and I've got this flat on a mortgage. So if everything goes right and, you know, house prices don't suddenly plummet, um, I'm hoping uh, to make about, you know, 15K from the increase of the sale of this house. So I own 40%. Uh, I'm on a shared ownership, shared ownership scheme. And so I'm hoping I'll make about 15K from the increase of the value and therefore have that plus the deposit I had paid, which was 21,000. Um, and then any equity I've paid off um, by the time I go. So that will make up a big chunk of that 100K that I need. And then everything else sort of on top of that, that I can save a um, 50% of my income of. And then finally, the plan in terms of what I need to live there, um, because my parents have moved, my dad's got very detailed sort of expenditure of what he's spending. So he's currently here on a contract, but my mum is living there on her own in their house. And theirs is fully paid off because they sold their house here. So I know from him what it's costing for her to live there. Um, in a fairly similar sized house on her own with four pets um, and that comes up to about 500 pounds a month so I'm aiming for like that's a very bare bones like no frills no like holidays no like nice things but you know for me the point of financial independence is to have the option of working but not having to work so that's just like what do I need to get by and that's 500 a month so the point of the kind of partial retirement in sort of three ish years time would be, you know, as long as my flat, you know, does go up and go up in value, because if it doesn't, you know, I'm not going to lose money. I'll, I'll just stick around for a bit longer. But if I can sell it, I'm hoping that the YouTube channel um, will make a big chunk of that income because I'm quite close to monetizing it now. And when I've spoken to three other of my friends who've recently monetized with similar size channels, they're making about 10 pounds a day. So that's going to end up being about 300 pounds a month. Um, so that's already over 50% of what I need. And then I'm doing the teaching English as a foreign language qualification at the moment. So I'm hoping I can sort of do, do online tutoring for TEFL, basically teaching English. Um, plus maybe some one-to-ones in Poland because uh, all the kids in Poland do English and quite a few of them, including my cousins, get private tutors and stuff. So I'm hoping between the YouTube and the TEFL, I'll be able to sort of get at least that 500, if not more. And then everything on top of it, just kind of reinvest into my investments or my dividends and stuff, just keep reinvesting to help everything grow and then eventually get to the, to the point where hopefully it'll just be my YouTube. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to stop talking now because it's, it's, it's been a while.
Uh, great stuff. Well, thanks so much. Um, and it was really interesting um, to hear a bit about your journey there. So I think just to kick things off, one question which, which popped into my head was in relation to your side hustles. And I always find with the fire journey, you know, I, I, I find it really easy to kind of talk about side hustles and kind of say you're going to do X, Y, and Z. But I find me included, a lot of people end up actually not really doing much of a side hustle when it's quite easy to kind of give up a bit early. So I think not, not, not counting your YouTube, those kind of early side hustles you were speaking about, what was your kind of process um, in terms of kind of working out which ones were good and then, and then the general process you went through in terms of thinking up the idea and then kind of executing on it? Sure. Um, so firstly, the sort of pet sitting, that was something that I'd done in the past just because it's something I love. So I just sort of reinstated like my profiles on the websites and because I no longer have pets because I'm not allowed them in my flat. It was a great way to sort of see pets and be around pets and get paid for it. So that was like something that I was doing that I enjoyed. So it didn't feel like a chore. It just felt like, oh, I'm getting to spend time with some cuddly animals. Then selling stuff again, it was, I mean, that's not really a side hustle, but it's just a way of sort of making the extra money. I started sort of adopting a more minimalist approach to life. So sort of gradually trying to decrease the things that I have that don't sort of bring me joy. I know that's really cliche and that's like the Marie Kondo thing from Netflix, but that kind of really resonated with me. And I thought if I can sell stuff, why not? So, you know, I had like a GoPro camera that I'd purchased a couple of years ago with the intention of using it loads on holidays and stuff. And I used it like once and I got really frustrated with it because I kept, it was so fiddly with the underwater thing and it just never really, it never really took off. So, you know, I sold that and things. And then finally with the zero hours contracts, I was just thinking of what I could do that was nearby because I knew that if I'm doing my nine to five, I wouldn't be traveling. Like I wouldn't want to, it's, it's just not something I'm going to stick to because if I'm already traveling to my nine to five, if I then have to travel somewhere for a second job and then travel home, I'm not going to stick with it. So I thought, what is around me that I could realistically do that's very different? And I was thinking about like, you know, there's some cafes, there's maybe some shops, but you know, I've worked in retail previously when I was in college and uni, didn't really enjoy it. Ended up putting an application just for a bar staff job, uh, got an interview very, very quickly. And then I went in and because the majority of the people who do sort of bar work are students, she sort of interviewed me and she was like, kind of need a new supervisor. Like I just put you into that job. I was like, fine. I've got no hospitality experience, but if you want to put me a supervisor, that's fine. Um, and I ended up like absolutely loving the job. It was so different from what I normally do. It was physically demanding, which was great because I sit at an office all day, you know, behind a desk, I don't move around. Whereas in these shifts, I'm constantly on my feet. So I was getting my steps up, I was sort of seeing it as a fitness thing. And then because they do like concerts and stuff, I was getting to see shows, I was getting free food, I was getting to socialize with people. Um, so it stopped being about like, oh, I just need to do this to make loads of money. Like even now, if I'm like, when can I go back? Whereas I'm like absolutely dreading going back to my normal job. Like I'm still working from home, but like I'm dreading going back to the office. Whereas here, every time I walk past the venue, I'm like, oh, I miss it. <laughs> when will you reopen? <laughs> so basically just find something new that's very different that you'll enjoy and that's nearby. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's really interesting that, uh, that, that you actually you kind of, massively enjoyed your side hustle <laughs> um, cool well thanks for answering that for me um so we've got a question from luke um in at the moment so luke if you want to jump off mute and then and then go ahead and ask that yourself to anna that'd be great yes sure i just checked before i start speaking and my audio is okay is that is that all all right yeah. Yeah. yeah it's all good all right cool um yeah hey no, thanks for thanks for being on it um no, it's really good for me, especially just because I can relate with a lot of what you're saying. And also recently, I've sort of got a blog and hopefully a YouTube channel in this kind of area before the end of the year. So, yeah, a lot for me to relate to. Um, the question I had was, um, I wondered how sort of open are you with uh, like friends and family about your sort of FI goals? Uh, and if so, sort of how, how do they react to it? Just because I'm sort of conscious that when I've shared it with friends in the past, um, those that aren't sort of 
not aware of the community can find it like a bit strange. So yeah, I'm just wondering how you sort of deal with that. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, firstly, if you do have a YouTube, you, you do end up doing a YouTube, let me know. Um, I'm happy to help uh, with some tips. But yeah, I've initially, um, I didn't really tell anyone and I kept my YouTube channel a secret as well for a long time. I was very worried about how people would react. But I became more and more confident because I ended up telling like one person here and then one person there. And then generally the reception was very good. So I think there's, I was always met with a little bit of like skepticism from people. Not often. Uh, the majority of people have been very like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, well done. Like you're so organized, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there's been a few people who've been a bit skeptical. But I think like, you know, telling them the numbers, they go, okay, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, the worst thing I got was someone sort of saying to me, they said, you can't live in Poland on less than 3000 a month uh, of like dollars or something. And I was like, okay, well, I have family in Poland. Um, and maybe that's true in like a city in Poland or something. And maybe that includes housing costs. But, you know, my aim is to have my house paid off. Um, and I'll be in a little village. I'm not going to have a car. I'm not really going to need any additional sort of, you know, the cost of living is going to be very low. So having to deal with sort of people who think that they know better than you, that's been like the hardest thing. But generally everyone I've spoken to um, has been really supportive. And I shared my YouTube channel on Facebook. And then actually I had about six different people message me uh, who I haven't spoken in years, like old school friends going, oh my God, your channel is amazing. You've inspired me so much. Like, thank you. And it was just so nice to see that and think like, oh, why haven't I shared this previously? Um, why was I scared of, of sharing it? Just, just, I was, I was just thinking, me, me and Anna were just talking pre, uh, previously to the call about how the YouTube Anna kind of went from, you know, trickling in the followers and recently you've had a bit of, a bit of a surge maybe. And it seems like you're kind of, I, I actually hear it a lot within the kind of influence or kind of social channel space that it's quite hard to get the first few. And then once you do it, it comes easier and easier as similar to compounding actually. <laughs> um, but anyway, I was just wondering what, whether you had any insight along kind of what that maybe pivotal point was where your YouTube channel went from, you know, a couple of followers here and there to kind of growing into the thousands. Yeah, um, so initially, so I started the channel back in November and my thinking initially um, was in my side hustles, I was talking to people about like finance and having always worked in finance, you know, I was surrounded by people who knew about it. Whereas being surrounded by people who were like, oh my God, that's like so helpful. Thank you so much. And like really grateful for advice that I thought was really basic. Um, I thought, okay, like, well, if I start a channel, like I could help other people with this kind of stuff. But then I never had time for videos. I wasn't really prioritizing it. So I think between November and April, I had about four videos maybe. And then come lockdown, I was like, oh, I've got all this free time on my hands. I'm going to start making loads of videos. And I was making two videos a week and consistently uploading on the same days or trying to upload on the same days. Now I'm very adamant that I do it because apparently the YouTube algorithm favors your videos if you upload consistently at the same times. Um, interacting with more channels, so commenting on other videos to get your sort of visibility out there and then setting up the social media and really sort of building relationships with people. So that's all really helped. And then keyword research, I started really paying attention to keyword research and how I do my titles and things. Um, I've had a few videos rank quite highly. I had one last week that's ranked number one for a certain keyword. So it comes up first on the YouTube search um, and within like two, two days it had already a thousand views and now it's on 2000 views, I think. Um, and I think I posted it on Sunday. So it's, it's doing pretty well. So just really focusing on, on the keywords and posting consistently. Okay. Okay. Really interesting. Cool. Um, okay. Then thanks for that. And uh, we've got Guy has got, um, a couple of um, a question or two, so I'll hand over to Gaia. Gaia, you can unmute and, and, and fire away. That'd be great. Hi, Emma. Thank you for sharing your story and all the insights. Really appreciate it. And um, I have two questions about Poland, actually, about the whole living in another country. I'll ask them together and you answer in whatever order you like. Um, how long would you think, how longer would you think it would take you to achieve fire if you stayed in London? That's one. 
So more of a number question. Second <laughs> one is, I think you mentioned you grew up in London most of your life, right? So yeah. do you have any thoughts about like social life? I don't know how many friends you have in Poland. I'm sure we're going to have an awesome time, not trying to discourage, <laughs> but just hear your thoughts. Um, yeah, so that's the one of the hard things where basically my whole life is here, apart from my family. And, you know, every single one of my friends, how I know how everything works, you know, how the government works, how to pay my council tax, you know, how to get a loan, whatever. Like, I have no clue how to do any of that in Poland. Um, but I think for me, knowing that my family's there and that I can sort of rely on them to, to help me through that. And with friends, I don't have any in Poland. Um, I left when I was very young, so it's only really my family. But my cousin is a similar age to me and she's got loads of friends. And when I'm there for family visits, um, I sometimes join them for stuff. And also, you know, it's weird saying this during COVID when no one can really go anywhere, but usually, you know, you can fly all the time. Like, so I'm sort of looking at it from the other way and just going like, well, I can just pop by this way. I know enough people where I can just be like, <laughs> stay on your sofa. Um, and the flights, if you book them enough in advance, can be very cheap to the airport because I fly with Ryanair. So uh, I've gotten flights previously for £10 one way. So it's, it's, it's quite doable. Um, and then in terms, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, and then in terms of the London question, um, if I was staying in London, so I would say probably about... I'd have to, you know, do the numbers so don't hold me to it, but I would think about three times as long, purely if I was staying in London, which if I was staying in England, I would definitely not stay in London um, at all. The cost of living here is just ridiculous. And I would never, like, to pay off this flat in full, it would take me a really long time. Um, whereas the share I own of my flat is 140K. So for that amount... You know, I've looked at flats in Sheffield uh, quite recently, actually, because I was having a conversation with my friend and I could buy a flat a lot nicer than this one in Sheffield for all, just under £100,000, which if I could do that, um, that's kind of the same as the Poland 100K of building that, that house. And that's probably all I would need, you know, a small, a small flat. I don't need much. I'm not planning to have children or anything. Um, that's one of the decisions I've sort of made in my life and so the fact I could get a flat somewhere like Sheffield for 100k that would mean the timeline would probably be very similar my cost of living would probably be a bit higher than 500 a month like it will be in Poland um, so it would probably still take a little bit longer but not as long as it would if I was planning to stay in London. Thank you very much I relate to so much I'm also shared ownership and also moved countries and I just want to encourage you I moved in 20 age 27 and you make new friends it's fine no oh, perfect <laughs> was it easy to make friends um, one of them is here on the call so <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah it's not too bad you I don't I'm guessing it'll be a bit harder because um you're not going to work there you said so less of uh what do you call yeah. it? Social circles you're thrown into. Well, what I'd been thinking initially, um, and it all sort of depends on, you know, how YouTube goes and stuff, because my initial plan was because of how much I'd enjoyed, you know, the bar work and stuff here, I never thought I would, because I hated retail, but I think the bar type work has, I don't know why it's really clicked with me. Um, so I always thought pre YouTube that I would go and work like part-time in a cafe or something just to supplement the income. So, you know, depending on what happens with the whole situation, that's still something that I could be quite happy doing. Um, for me, the, the majority of it is getting out of the stress of working in finance. And, you know, I, I have a friend who's a GP and she tends to old people and she always asks them what career they've had. And she said something to me, and I think this is partly why things clicked for me last summer, um, when I said about sort of uh, making that decision last summer. She said, everyone she meets who's living 90 years plus has had manual jobs, and everyone who dies young has had stressful office jobs. And at that point, I was like, 
I'm not doing this for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm like, starting I'm, to type my resignation letter. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't believe, I mean, it makes so much sense because stress is so detrimental to your health. And I think I naturally stress quite a lot more than a lot of people I know because I want to be good at my job. I care a lot about what I'm doing, how I'm perceived. It's like a bit of a weird insecurity where someone once said something about like how I've been promoted so quickly and like try to make some snide comment and the rational person would probably just throw that away and be like, well, look where you are and look where I am. But it's stuck with me so much that I constantly feel this need to prove myself. And through that, I'm constantly stressing. I'm like, oh, this number's out and this hasn't been done. And oh my God. And I just a constant cycle of stress and never being able to switch off. And I, I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Okay, really, um, really great stuff. Uh, cool. So we're coming up to the half an hour mark. So if anyone else has got any more questions, chuck them in the um, comments uh, now. But just, I was just thinking, um, I think a lot of people like you, Anna, kind of think about fire and think about pivoting into um, a different country. And what popped into my head, it might be a basic question because I haven't looked into it. But in terms of your investments, I assume a lot of them are kind of through UK kind of investment vehicles or, or at least kind of in pounds. Have you thought into kind of what happens once you move to Poland in terms of obviously withdrawing out of your um, investments? Um, a little bit, probably not as much as I need to, um, but it has been on my mind. Um, I know that for certain companies, it should be fine. Um, but yeah, I, I invest at the moment through free trade and trading 212. So I know that they are expanding into um, a lot of different countries at the moment. So my main hope is that by the time I go, they'll just be there. If it's, yeah, if it's required that I move my investments, then, then I'll move them. Yeah, maybe that's um, a better question for the follow-up fireside chat once you've reached fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think um, it sounds like Luke has a similar que well, not so, a question along the same kind of investment lines. So um, Luke, you can jump on and ask that if you want. Yeah, it was kind of covered there, but I was just kind of wondering, um, in terms of your like investment strategy, do you kind of uh, invest into index funds or are you more of like dividend stocks and how does that kind of like feed into your like £500 a month uh, expenses plan? Uh, yeah, so I'm basically a, both index funds and dividend stocks. Um, I've got a very small um, growth portfolio that I'm going to keep very small. Um, I want to focus more on the ETFs and the dividend stocks. Um, I'm The ETFs I've got, I've picked because they pay dividends as well. Um, so I've got like the high dividend, arist dividend aristocrat ETF and stuff from Vanguard. Um, and then mostly dividend paying stocks like Realty, AT&T, AbbVie, those kinds of stocks. Um, so my, my kind of thinking is it's probably going to be 60% in, in index funds um, and then sort of 40% in dividend stocks and then little bits, negligible bits in, in the growth funds just for fun. Yeah, sounds cool. And, and do the, the dividends or the, or the appreciation you're paid on that factor into your 500? I know you said about like uh, YouTube takes care of this percentage of it and... Um, other like um, informal work takes care of the rest how does this sort of like investment return come into that or is that just like saving for further down the line um so i'm, I'm hoping that eventually um the dividend dividend income will cover that so from what i'm thinking and like my initial calculations i'd probably need about eighty thousand um in the high dividend yield sort of companies to get that 500 a month um so that's why it's sort of that's not really achievable for my initial target but i'm hoping if i continue just reinvesting and you know maybe you know some people get really lucky with things like youtube and i know a couple of girls who are making like thousands every month from their youtube channel um so you know if that ever happened obviously that gets me closer to that to that dividend payout but um at the moment i'm focusing on purely the kind of YouTube and passive income in terms of like I sell my spreadsheet at the moment but I'm planning to sell a few more things on my Etsy and stuff um, just to fuel that kind of passive income 
and then hopefully the income from that will fuel the investments more and then just sort of compound over time. Yeah, sounds good. Great. Okay, cool. So we've got thanks time. Yeah, thanks. Sorry, yeah, for cutting you off there, Luke. Um, we've got time for one one more question. Um, so Rory's got a got a quick question. So um, if you unmute there, Rory, and then and then ask yourself, that'd be great. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I was just wondering why are you focusing on YouTube when there's lots of kind of things out there? Like, why does it appeal to you specifically? And also, how are you keeping your future content non-repetitive? Because there's a lot of like there's not that much to say potentially sometimes so yeah i'm just wondering about that thank you <laughs> yeah no worries um, it's funny because my mum asked me the exact same question <laughs> um about the repetitive content um honestly uh with the content it's something that i worry about but so far like i've got content planned out for the next two months um and then when i get ideas i switch it around i move things around um there are videos which will be sort of repetitive in terms of like people seem to really enjoy regular portfolio updates uh, passive income reports stuff like that um then i'm thinking like book reviews uh once i'm there you know i follow a lot of people on youtube who have been on the sort of fire journey for a long time and they've never run out of content so i try not to stress too much um i get requests from from my followers you know can you make a video about this and that so then i add them to my list um things about like my journey that I'll share. Um, I'm thinking, you know, once I finish my contract um, at work, I'll probably be a bit more open in terms of like um, numbers and things. And I, I think there's always things that people people want to know about and ask you. And, you know, if, if, if I run out of content, um, that that'll be really crap. But um, on the other hand, actually something I didn't mention, uh, which my mum as well mentioned was she would like to, us to set up a cooking channel together. So my mum used to have a really popular blog in Poland, a cooking blog. Um, she's really good at cooking and amazing things like that. And she was one of the most popular blogs in Poland. She actually had Polish TV fly out to London uh, to do a segment on her and on like Polish news. Um, and I think now the readership is going more towards YouTube. So she was thinking all her old recipes from that blog and stuff she would make into videos, but she obviously can't make it herself so she was thinking we could do that together and um, so that again is like a another way of, of sort of making making money yeah that sounds great thank you very much good luck with it <laughs> thank you did i answer because you had two i can't remember whether i answered both of them um i oh why kind youtube of asked why youtube out of all the other options really um yeah, yeah so um i think because youtube has always appealed to me um I've had a couple of channels in the past, which I've never really stuck with because I tried to sort of do them about things that I just, I wasn't knowledgeable enough in or passionate enough about, I think. So I just never really continued to make videos, but the idea of YouTube always appealed to me. And I watch a lot of YouTube myself. So I think I wanted to go with something that I know I enjoy. Um, and, you know, I watched so many like fire videos and finance and personal finance videos before I even made my channel. Um, and I thought, well, if I enjoy watching it so much, hopefully other people will enjoy watching mine. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Great stuff. Um, so we're going to call it, call it an evening there, guys. Um, I'm a bit conscious of the time, but um, I'll just finish on a huge thanks, Anna. Really, really appreciating you agreeing to give up your time and jump on this call. I think... Um, speaking about everyone, I think has been super insightful and um, really useful and really liked some of the some of the questions coming through. So a big thanks. Best of luck with the channel. Uh, with the fine guys, give give Anna a uh, subscribe subscription or subscribe to her channel, I should say. Um, or give it a follow. <laughs> and um, yeah, thanks so much, Anna. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Guys. Have a good evening. Bye. -bye.